So before we start, I would like to ask you to give rise to supreme 
uh, motivation of a bodhicitta. This means that for the benefit of all sentient beings, I'm going to listen to, reflect on, and meditate on teachings of a genuine uh, Dharma. So particularly, we are studying on uh, uh, Bodhisattva Chaya Avatara, which is uh, uh, the practice of uh, Bodhicitta, so which requires to have a motivation uh, that is a genuine motivation for the benefit of all sentient beings. Although every practice needs motivation, and there are three excellencies. Uh, uh, the perfect from the beginning, perfect from the end, middle and perfect from the end. The perfect from beginning is the motivation, genuine motivation. Usually whatever uh, the work or practice we approach, we do have to have uh, some type of motivation, intention, a plan. But here, this, what makes this one is so special and great is because in our motivation we are including all sentient beings. The space has no limit. Therefore, the sentient beings who live in that space has no limit. So therefore, the, the karmic cause and if, uh, effect that go along with the all sentient beings has a no limit. So, so all those sentient beings have a limitless suffering. So it, <clears throat> in uh, aspiration prayer it says, uh, uh, the space has a no limit, therefore the sentient beings have a no limit. Uh, because the sentient beings have a no limit, um, uh, the emotion has no limit, reflective emotion. So therefore, my aspiration and my uh, compassion have no limit. <clears throat> so it is important to think about all sentient beings uh, when we practice, especially Mahayana teachings. So as I mentioned last time, uh, this particular teaching have uh, 10 chapters. The first three part uh, are how to generate how to achieve bodhicitta and then second three or second three uh, chapters are uh, how to maintain this uh, <coughs> bodhicitta and then uh, the next three chapters are how to develop this uh, bodhicitta and then the last one is the dedication and we actually covered the first two chapters uh, the first one is the benefit of bodhicitta and then second chapter was uh, uh, confession, emphasize on uh, confession. Uh, in order to uh, receive uh, bodhisattva vow, in order to practice the bodhicitta, uh, there are steps that we need to follow. Uh, bodhisattva vow is the, the fundamental uh, ground. In order to practice the bodhicitta and we have to have uh, that uh, foundation which is actually uh, receiving the bodhisattva vow so in order to receive a bodhisattva vow there are a few uh, preparations the first one is of course they're talking about the benefit of the bodhicitta itself and then a uh, second one is uh, uh, in, in Tibetan we call it uh, uh, <coughs> Dipashyapa and Sonam Sapa. Dipashyapa means confess. Confess all our negativities and obscurations. And uh, Sonam Sapa means accumulating merit. So these two are the actually closest uh, condition for achieve Bodhicitta. So we have spoken a uh, confession part already. So the, uh, uh, and also uh, the next one is uh, uh, accumulating the merit. So accumulating merit explained in you know, with the seven branch offerings. So we have uh, discussed last time uh, prostration and uh, offering and uh, <coughs> and confession. These three uh, parts are already uh, covered. So again, um, uh, so we have uh, 
84,000 negative emotions. So those 84,000 negative emotions are included the main six part of the negative emotions. So the one of them <coughs> is uh, uh, ego. So ego clinging is one of the main uh, ego that is created by the ignorance that does not know uh, the emptiness basically. Uh, selflessness is the something that we really need to understand but uh, you know because of our uh, we because of we do not have enough wisdom to see the, the, the reality or fundamental essence of the nature so we have those abstractions and those created our other negative emotions such as ego is one of the thing so the reason why uh, Buddha said uh, <coughs> The first of the seventh branch is an uh, uh, antidote to the ego. So uh, it, it explained uh, in a few different ways, but the ego is, uh, you know, in samsara we have six realms. So each of actually uh, six negative emotions are the, the direct cause to six uh, realms of um, uh, samsaric uh, realms, a sixth circle of existence. So the ego is a direct cause to to be bo born in a uh, god realm. So and our intention and our aim is not only to uh, free from uh, the lower realms like a hungry ghost uh, hell, um, animal realms, those are out of these six we consider as the lower realms because they have a more uh, suffering. And then we have a three upper realms which are the human life, a human realms, a demigod realm and god realm. Uh, although the compared to three lower realms, these upper realms are much much better. Uh, it has more uh, happiness has more opportunity to practice the Dharma. It has much more uh, potentials to achieve, you know, uh, the, uh, to achieve higher level. And it has, you know, uh, ultimately it, it, uh, potential to achieve enlightenment. But still, it has, it, it is still samsara and it has uh, suffering. So God realm considered as also uh, samsara, unenlightened existent, unenlightened being, so therefore it has a suffering. So the direct cause for the uh, God realm is, uh, is, the, is the ego, you know, ego, uh, selfish, you know. And, and also, uh, <coughs> when we uh, think about the, the, the next lifetime, it's a direct cause to, uh, to the uh, God realm, but also uh, the ego cr create lots of problems, and in uh, in in the text saying, "Ngajal um, ego is ngajal intipeden, ngajal kumbal ayundeng gichu macha," means it's once you have an ego, it's it's like a closed ball, complete closed ball that doesn't go inside. So when we have an ego, and think that I'm better than this him or her, you know. So then you have a no opportunity to receive more advice, more teachings. So it means you're completely blocked to develop. Whatever you have, it's the last, you know. So, so when we do prostration, means actually we, it, it is the prostration is the main antidote to our ego. The firstly, the prostration tells that is you are not the most perfect. You still have an opportunity and you still have a ways to, to, to develop because we are not enlightened. Although you, are, you have a, so much qualification, but until you are enlightened, there are still lots of things to learn, lots of things to achieve, a lot of, of uh, sufferings, lots of obstacles that get, you know, we need to get out of. <coughs> 
So basically, the prostration, what we are doing is uh, we are accepting the qualities, understanding the qualities of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas with three devotions, and we accepting that we are also not rich, we don't, we are not reached the high ultimate level, the highest level, you know. So that's why you accept somebody who is higher than you and who is better than you, somebody who can uh, you learn from, you accepting and bowing down and respect. That is uh, the <clears throat> the antidote to our uh, ego and also removing the direct cause to born in in uh, God realm. So the next one is uh, uh, offering. An offering is also an uh, important method to accumulating uh, our merit and also uh, uh, it's antidote to our greedy, you know. So mainly the greedy is a direct cause to be born in a uh, hungry ghost, you know. Uh, yes, greed, greedy is a direct cause to be born in a hungry ghost. So in order to remove, in order to eliminate, that the best method is to uh, to making offering and generosity, offering and generosity. So offering to uh, the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, those who have a, a higher uh, quality achievement, those who deserve uh, offerings, and then making generosity to those who need, those who have no food, those who have no clothes, you know. So basically that is uh, the antidote to our uh, uh, greedy. But also it is uh, uh, teaching and it is advice that uh, we should not always looking for receive things. And also we should learn to give away for those who need, those who deserve, you know. Because uh, the one of the the main cause to to stuck in samsara all the time is, is because of this ego, this selfish, always want these and that, you know. So no matter how much we have, we always want it. And a lot of times we did, don't even know whether you really need these or not, but we always want this, you know. If we look in our life, we have, we want so many. We want uh, summer shoes, we want winter shoes, we want snow shoes, we want walking shoes, and running shoes, and jogging shoes, and then, you know, anything is like that. But if we really look carefully, we don't need it. What we need is very limited, but what we <coughs> want is unlimited, you know. So the giving and making offering is actually a training for us to, to tell us what we always think that we need is not necessarily what we need. So we have to understand that what we need and what we want is a difference. So that's why the offering is very <coughs> important. Offering and generosity doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot make an offering or a generosity if you don't have a lot of uh, things. You know, Melarepa said, uh, I am uh, physically, I'm very poor. I have nothing to offer, but the best offering that I have to my guru is my practice. You know, so what it tells means when we say offering and generosity, we can do it physically, practically if we have it, but if we don't have, we have big, the important thing is we have to think that, <coughs> have that intention in our mind. Even though you have, you have a lot of things to give away, you gave. But are you really happy with what you're doing? You know, that's more important. For just to show, and just people think that you are giving so much and you're a great person, you're doing this and that to, to, for our fame, our reputation, our wealth, our, our disciple. <clears throat> if we are doing things, if you are not really ready, insight in your mind, then basically we're wasting whatever generosity or whatever offering we do. You know, we go to... <clears throat> um, uh, flower shop and you want to buy flower off offer to the shrine room and then uh, you look for the, the damage you want because you get cheaper you know if we have that kind of intention we should not just even try but whatever you can afford even if you can buy a small one but it should be you know clean and a nice and good one so that yeah, um, the mind is more important than actually our uh, physical, <clears throat> you know, action because our physical actions are 
basically followed by our mental decisions, you know. So if we don't have a genuine, pure, pure motivation of offering or, or generous, even if we do something that won't benefit, it won't benefit for you for worldly and also it won't benefit for those who receive, it won't accumulate any merit, it won't, um, you know, uh, re remove our uh, negativities. The, the next one is uh, is confession. Is that right? What stanza are you on, Monica? Oh, actually, no, not yet, not there yet. Okay, this is from the last week or last week? Well, it's yes, it's kind of last week, but just just a brief brief review and reminding of uh, of of last time. The next one is a confession that we did last time with the with the four four steps right in front of the buddhas and bodhisattvas and then you confess uh, with uh, what you have done is understanding what you have done is uh, not right not nice and and with the promising that you're not going to do in the future and so on those are the steps with the confession uh, <clears throat> so confession is again you know you a lot of times, uh, um, everybody have that problem, you know. Uh, people never accept our faults. It's, it's very difficult to accept your own faults. So that's why, the not don't mention about the next life and being born in hell realm, not achieving enlightenment and so on. But if you look in this, this our existing world, uh, there are so many problems like wars and all these fighting between the countries, fighting between the community, fighting between uh, religious groups and, and even within the family. The main problem is actually you're not accepting your own fault and you always try to find the fault is coming from other side. So that's why all this coming fighting in the problem comes. If you are able to accept your own fault and apologize, then the problem will solve, you know. So that's why uh, confess is always important. Uh, at the spiritual point of view, the confession is uh, uh, so important. So that's why we have uh, four different steps of uh, how to, you know, confess. And even our, our daily life, it's very important, you know. So this, the sorry, it's very important. You have to say sorry. If you make a mistake, it's always, uh, it, it works, you know. It's, uh, it's very obvious. <coughs> So then these three are of, of seven branch offering is actually covered uh, the last section, the section of confession. So the next one is uh, we are in uh, verse one. Uh, so this here start um, the, th the third uh, chapter of the Bodhisattva Chaya Avatara. Uh, the title of the chapter is to to receive bodhisattva vow, but it also uh, began uh, uh, with the the continuation of three uh, seven branch offering. So the three of the seven branch offering is gone, but next one is uh, third one. So third one is um, rejoicing. So the rejoicing is also again. Uh, uh, very important because uh, it's its main antidote. The rejoicing is antidote to jealousy. You know, uh, jealousy is a direct uh, cause to be born in uh, um, mm, a demigod. Uh, so so here is a few different ways of uh, three different ways of, uh, of of rejoicing basically rejoicing uh means if you see somebody have done something good beneficial for themselves and others you happy for it so usually as ordinary sentient beings what happen is we have so much these negative emotions that we have jealous mind is always inside you know you want to be better than you know these and better than these 
you know you want to be more educated more uh, richer and smarter and more powerful so always that's why there's so many so much competitions in this world right because of the jealousy we never have a rejoice if somebody have a something it's easy to say good for you but at the same time you have or oh, i wish i have a something like that you know, even like between your family members and even in the neighbors, you know, if your neighbor have bought a better car and the next time you're thinking that you want to buy something like that, that's also kind of jealousy instead of rejoicing that it's good for them. So it doesn't have to be have a those negative emotions. Doesn't we doesn't we don't have to be bad people to have this. It's it's a very uh, nature that we all are all sentient beings. We have accumulated so much negativities in last so many uh, past lifetimes. So, so, so it doesn't have to be bad person. But, but what uh, what we have to do is we have to understand and we have to recognize. And every time we have a, that kind of uh, thought in our mind, and we have to understand that this is bad. You know, we have to get rid of. We have to find the cause to eliminate this. So now here is uh, the first verse. Sinjin kunjin ni sangat tunggang arsa kita tunggang cinta dene. So there are three ways, three three levels of of rejoicing. The it's the first one it's uh, rejoicing to uh, ordinary uh, merit. Is it merit? Ordinary virtues. You know, if somebody who have practiced or in this, because this is very detailed, it, it has a cause and if effect, rejoicing for the cause, meaning that if somebody is practicing, uh, you know, accumulating merit and confession and all those, all those, those practices that are the cause to be born in the human realm, to be born in God realm, to be born in a hungry ghost, those higher realms, when they are uh, enter into these journeys, they are the cause. So we rejoice for whoever encounter with these actions, this, you know, uh, the ten virtues. Like we have a ten virtues and ten negative virtues. The so basically the ten virtues will cause you, you to you be born in higher realms. So then we also rejoicing for the result of those who are born in human realm, those who are born in uh, uh, hungry ghost, no, uh, God realm and, and demigod realm. And we rejoice for whatever joy, happiness, success, achievement they have in their life without uh, any um, saddle of um, jealous thoughts, jealous mind completely rejoicing completely happy for them so in many teachings it says uh, uh, I don't know if you have read uh, this uh, Sukhawati prayer it says uh, the rejoicing the great thing about the rejoicing is uh, you rejoice for somebody else's hard work and you get the same benefit you know so when you read it says uh, Mm. means when you rejoice for somebody who practiced the Dharma just by rejoicing if, as long as if you're rejoicing it's genuine, pure from your heart you would get the same benefit same result of those who are actually practicing, spending time and energy, or work hard to practice, you get the same benefit. So that's why it's it's very important to rejoicing. And then the next rejoicing is uh, the second verse. So in, in Buddhist practice, we have a three levels, right? The virtues have a three different levels. The first of virtues are the virtues that can uh, help you to be born in higher realms. And then the next virtue are the virtues that will help you to be born in, um, you know, 
not Buddha, but our heart, and and, and uh, what do you call it? We have a three three yanas, like lower yana, lower levels, the self liberation and the Parti Moksha. Those levels, they are basically. Um, so the, the the way the Buddha said these are is a, it's a resting place. In order to achieve enlightenment, it's a long way to go. So we have to accumulate so much merit, we have to purify so much obscurations and emotions. But in order not to, um, what do you call, um, what is the right for that? To, to give up, you know, because the journey is too long. So there is a resting place, which is called uh, uh, these two two lower levels of the yan uh, Buddhist yana are are this resting place. <coughs> so whoever actually uh, entering into the path to achieve that level, and also whoever achieved the result, that realization, we rejoice for them without any. Um, any jealous mind, jealous thought. <coughs> so those are actually free. Those beings are completely free from samsara. Yet they are not achieve enlightenment. So we rejoice for them. And then the next level is... Uh, the next one is rejoicing for the bodhisattvas and buddhas so their intention is also uh, uh, extraordinary uh, compared to the previous one is when they generate the motivation or their intention is the for the benefit of countless sentient beings is the actual intention the time is until reach enlightenment and i would enter into practice of six parameters generosity moral discipline patience concentration and wisdom so the intention and action those intention and action will lead to the stage of uh, bodhisattvas like bodhisattvas starting from the first bumi to the tenth bumi from the tenth bumi is, is enlightenment so all the buddhas and bodhisattvas who achieve enlightenment by generating limitless motivation of a compassion a bodhicitta and also by practicing on the six perfections six parameters so we rejoice completely to the buddhas and bodhisattvas without any uh, doubt without any uh, jealousy mind any has without any hesitate so that was the rejoicing part so then again you know so uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, this doesn't really have to be uh, practitioners that you can rejoice and also uh, like we live in this samsara world and we are dealing with all kinds of things with the different levels of a human being. So whoever have an achievement, successful, you know, anything that gives them happiness, we always rejoice for them. So the next one is uh, request to turn the wheel of the Dharma. That's a... Uh, Fifth one, I think fifth of seven branch offerings. So when first Buddha achieved enlightenment 2,500 years ago, and he achieved the ultimate realization, which is very extraordinary and which is beyond, you know, its uh, expression. And what he thought was, although I achieved such a profound realization, but nobody 
gonna understand. So therefore, I'm not gonna teach. So he decided basically not to teach and went to his solitary uh, place. And then all those um, uh, Brahma and those kings, they request him to teach the Dharma and then Buddha taught. So the requesting to, to, to teach the Dharma, it's very, very important. So for us also, we have to make it that prayer, uh, aspiration prayer, or request Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to turn the wheel of the Dharma. That to remove the darkness and of ignorance of all sentient beings. You know, to remove the darkness of ignorance and afflictive emotions that is being with all those sentient beings from so many lifetimes. So because of that, all sentient beings are experiencing tremendous suffering. So now we request Buddha to teach the Dharma, to eliminate the ignorance of sentient beings, to remove those negative, afflictive emotions of all sentient beings. So that's the next part. Chujukoloko, requesting to turn the wheel of the Dharma. So the next one is uh, requesting to requesting Buddha not to pass away, not to pass away. Because if if Buddha pass away, and then there will not be the teaching, you know, Buddha has to live in order to teach the Dharma. So if the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are living this samsaric world, I mean, they are already achieving enlightenment. They don't have the same suffering as we do, but still they can travel to, they can go to different pure realms, different, you know, uh, uh, mm, yeah, pure realms, uh, different mandalas. But we have to request them to remain in this world to teach the Dharma. I think this can also relate your masters, your teachers who, you know, uh, basically it's not that they wanted to, to go and die and then when you ask them to stay and they will listen to you, but in, everything is interdependent, you know, interconnected. The, the ex, everything exists, it's all interrelated, interconnected. Nothing is existed by its own. So that's why, because everything is connected, inter, interdependent. So your request to remain and also connected to, to, uh, to remain the teachers and masters. So, so this one is one of the important uh, aspect. It's, uh, which one is it, the six? Yeah. So the next one is So this one is a dedication. Actually the last verse of the seven branch offering. So the dedication in this Bodhisattva Tara Avatara comes in many times, but comes in a slightly different ways. So this here, the reason why we have here the dedication, the whole, the 10th chapter is a dedication prayer. But the reason why we have here is also, it, before we receive the Bodhisattva vow, we have these preparations, confession and accumulating merit. So accumulating merit to have a six branch offerings. So this one, the last one is a dedication. Uh, basically dedication is uh, very much similar to uh, the motivation that we have and especially in Vajrayana practices every practice that we do as I mentioned earlier the motivation dedication is uh, mandatory so the dedication uh, here means basically whatever merit that I have done you know in the past my past life in my you know whatever in the past countless past lifetimes any good deeds that I have accumulate, anything that is beneficial for other sentient beings or anything that is a cause or conditions to achieve enlightenment or bodhisattvas or our hearts, even higher realms, whatever deeds merit that I have, 
I dedicate to all sentient beings is the, is the dedication part. So the dedication part is always very important. Whatever practice we do, it's required the dedication because it says in later, it, it will say, uh, uh, if you don't have the dedication, no matter how extensive and profound your practice, and a certain negative emotion can destroy it. The undedicated the practice can can destroy it by when when we have a strong negative emotions arises like a strong anger, you know, strong uh, desire, strong hatred, strong attachment. They can destroy it. But once you dedicate, and then they cannot destroy. So the dedication, the one of the ways is I just mentioned, and then. There's also another way of a dedication is usually we as ordinary sentient beings, ordinary human beings, don't know much uh, uh, about how to dedicate. So therefore, I wanted to dedicate the way all the past Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, like Samhita Banda, Avalokiteshvara, Manjushiri, Vajrapani, all those great beings, they dedicate the dedication perfectly and I wanted to do the same way of whatever they done, you know, what, whatever way that they did. So that ensures you that your dedication is a correct, you know, because they never can make a mistake. They're enlightened. They're not sentient, ordinary sentient beings anymore. So now it it also it says uh, I wanted to be uh, the medicine for those who are sick. Uh, I wanted to be the doctor. I wanted to be the nurse. You know, to help those sickness, uh, sick people. Until they recover from their sickness, I wanted to be the medicine, I wanted to be the doctor, I wanted to be nurse, I wanted to be assistant, and I am ready to be anything that is necessary to benefit sentient beings. So here, and also we can think a deeper way, uh, uh, when we say a sick person, a doctor, uh, and a medicine, but also here as a bodhisattva practice, uh, actually all the samsaric beings are sick, you know. Samsaric beings are sick with a sickness of suffering, the samsaric suffering that coming from our negative emotions, anger, hatred, jealousy, mainly the ignorance. So I wanted to be the doctor, you know, to remove their sickness of uh, suffering that coming from the negative emotions. I want to be the doctor to who, doctor who prescribe, you know, how to remove their uh, suffering. We have, generally we have suffering of suffering, suffering of change, suffering of all pervasive. So the cause of suffering is anger, hatred, jealousy, and mainly three poisons. So I want to be the doctor to tell them how to remove these negative emotions so that they completely cure from their sickness of suffering of samsara. So the, you can relate to the medicine, the treatment, and then the nurse or similar. So also it says, I wanted to be the food for those who are hungry and I wanted to be the drink for those who are thirsty. And also I wanted to be create a rain of food and the drinking for all whoever need it. So this one we can understand also in the two levels, ordinary level, that when somebody is hungry they need food. 
If somebody is sick, they need a drink. But we are, as an ordinary sentient being, samsaric beings, basically we are hungry and we are sick. So we need food of a dharma and a practice the dharma and drink of a, of a dharma, you know. So basically, you know, this is Mahayana um, a dedication. So we have to, everything that you need to be there, you want to be, uh, how do I say, uh, you're ready to be there for whatever level they need. So, and also we shouldn't under, uh, be uh, misunderstand that because sometimes the people think, oh, I cannot do this, you know, I cannot go to help sick people. And sometimes some people can and some people cannot. But even if you cannot in your, your real life to go there and help, but you have to have this intention in your mind, you know, may I want to be, may I will be the, uh, the doctor, may I be the, the medicine, may I be the treatment, may I be the nurse, you know. So this is a training and if you think over and over like this, slowly it's developed. It's developed your compassion, developed your mind, and then eventually you will be ready to do and ready to act. And also it says, um, so those who poor, I want you to be the wish fulfilling jewel. You know, wish fulfilling jewel is uh, something that gives you everything you need, you know. Whatever you wish, it will come from the wish fulfilling jewel. So you want it to be the wish fulfilling jewel for those who need, those who are poor, those who have no food, those who have no clothes, those who have no shelter, those who have no vehicle, those who have you know, whoever needs something and you want it to be their need, you know, whatever they want. So the next one is uh, actually um, mind training part. Uh, mind training is of course the one of the, the most important practice and we usually have a lot of teachings on mind training like seven point mind training from Atishya and we have uh, eight verses of mind training uh, teaching from um, uh, Kadamba Master, there's so many uh, mind training teachings. So basically uh, here and also we have a short teaching of a mind training. Mind training. So, again, as a Mahayana practitioner, a Bodhisattva, you know, Bodhisattva practitioner, uh, uh, and we have to be ready for all sentient beings. Like for, for sentient beings in need, you have to be ready to do anything. You have to be ready to give up anything. As long as if it's a benefit, you have to be ready to give up your life. You have to be ready to give up your belongings. You have to be ready to give up your, even your virtues, you know, your practice, your dharma all your accumulations. So it says, means I am going to give away anything that I have without any resistance, without any, um, what is it? Stinginess. Stinginess. 
lutang. The yin long chu means my body, my belongings, and also the virtues that I have generated in the past, virtues that I am uh, cultivating, generating now, and also virtues that I am going to cultivate in the future. For the benefit of sentient beings, I am going to give everything I have. So, our aim is to achieve enlightenment. In order to achieve enlightenment, without having that kind of, uh, what do you call it, readiness, intention, and bodhicitta, we cannot achieve enlightenment. So basically, my training, all the my training teachers are saying, teachings are saying, like they are explaining how we train our mind. You know, we are right now we are in a state of mind training. We are not bodhisattva. We are not Buddhas. So nobody is telling us to to give everything away. You know, but we are practicing mind training. So we are slowly train has to train with this this method. Uh, yeah, the second one, the verse 12 is actually explaining why we have to give everything away, the reason, you know. And the next verse, the 13th one is a uh, little bit more detail about how we are giving our our life our body away for sentient beings So now I am going to give my body and my belongings and anything I have. So therefore, whoever do anything to me, if they're, you know, blaming you, if they're beating you, if they are, you know, talking bad about you, no matter whatever they do, I do not care because I already gave everything away for the benefit of sentient beings. If you wanted to make a uh, play with my body, if you want to make a fun of my body, and um, so I don't care, you know, it's like I, is, is the translation is like that? Is it close? Kyonde yeah. means uh, talking bad about you and they're making fun of you because you already gave your life, your body away. So therefore you are not challenged for any of those. So no reason to challenge it. So in short, it says anything that does not harm other beings directly, indirectly, and then whatever they want you to do, I am letting them to do it. No problem. I am ready because I already practiced, I already trained mind. I know that this is the only way to achieve enlightenment. I know that everything is impermanent, everything is ex uh, not exist. So therefore, even this physical body and mind that I have is a temporarily exist. 
temporarily exist only because it interdependently arises and also it does not stay a single moment is part change every moment and also the end will come and no matter what the sooner or later so therefore i have nothing to attach to and grasping towards it so it benefits so much for other sentient beings i'm always ready and let it go and let it do whatever they want telling everyone when you are like kang in by is it you dalam in the name they are going to me major whatever they have done to me may that would not be any uh what do you call meaningless whatever they do big i want to be beneficial meaningless for benefit for others man my dalam me na kanda ke to am tipo sem so na tinha dado da vez tem going to be george so because of me if 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 they angry at me if they because of me if they are uh, uh what do you call it? reduce their devotion or whatever they have done through me may it cause to be a big meaningful thing which means for benefit for those beings to to develop uh, to practice their their dharma dalla casera che da ne prosegua ya che che cerca to io tanto sa giù cadin giorus so again if they talking bad about me Uh, accusing me blaming me whatever they do may it cause to to be a great cause to achieve bodhicitta and buddha it be, may it becomes a uh, great fortunate um cause for the enlightened enlightenment yes If the pra- so the practitioner if the practitioner is someone that's receiving like bad feelings from other people mm-hmm. in if that per- so it's it's the the very practice then that will help to purify the bad actions so how can a person if you have anger and hate in you how can that not injure you like if i'm angry at you or something and how does that not injure me how is it no if you are angry at me mm-hmm. basically it's saying is i should not retaliate with anger and with negative actions i should be patient and you know i should not mind i should be ready let you do whatever you want it as long as if it be benefit and not only that that action your anger or whatever towards me now i'm wishing and praying that will also cause to benefit other sentient beings including you and including me so it's it's almost you know if i if i have in, in if i'm angry at you <laughs> and you and you respond with love and patience yes. that's that that in itself is a yes. dharma basically at the end at the end what happened is uh, if you angry at me and i reply you with the love and patience and understanding basically i am developing you know my state my mind so my mind has uh, every one of our mind have a limitless potential to develop but those are the import, important i mean the the difficult challenge that we face usually in our life that is we are difficult to deal with them we are always end up and and, and replying with a negative action and that that lead us to worse make it worse but if you be able to uh, reply and challenge with with the positive actions 
the love, compassion, patience, forgiveness. Basically, that is a great um, condition for me to develop my patience, my compassion, uh, you know, my potential. So it's 18th, are we in 18th? Yep. So this verse, it says, uh, the result of mind training dedicating to others. May I be the protector of those who need. Uh, may I be the guide to those who are traveling and uh, may I be the boat for those who cross the uh, river um, uh, Trutang, Sengtang, Samba so these are similar you know like in a small uh, creek I want to be a small bridge and then uh, for, uh, to cross the big uh, river I want to be a boat and, um, and to cross the ocean I want it to be a, a cruise <laughs> you know, so these kind of, uh, you know, dedic dedications. Uh, tenzins, excuse me, is that ref remember your, in your first teaching you talked about the three <coughs> ways, the three vehicles that you could go as a, as a king or as a shepherd or as a boat. Is it similar to that? Is that what they're saying? Yes, this is just general uh, dedication. Uh, but of course, uh, the, the three ways of generating uh, bodhicitta and, and it will come a little later. So we'll talk a little more about that. Okay, thank you. So basically here is telling or, or training ourselves in order to be ready for whatever other sentient beings need, you know. I wanted to be the food for those who are hungry. I want to be the drink for those who are thirsty. I want to be the boat for those who cross the river. I want to be the cruise, those who cross the ocean. I wanted to be uh, the island for those who uh, need to rest uh, in the middle, you know. And also I, I wanted to be the lamp for those who have, uh, those who need the light. Uh, you know, where there is no light, maybe there is no sun. Neymar, I want, I wanted to be house for those who need home. I wanted to be the bed for those who need bed. Then, um, um, ne is a home and mal is a bed. Then, uh, I want, I, uh, I want to be the servant for those who need servant. Servant? So, right? Yin or Pumba Zang, Renato, Minchin Tang. So all, I also wanted to be the wish fulfilling jewels for those who need. I also wanted to be special um, uh, mantras for those who practice. Uh, um, I want to be the wish fulfilling tree of something. Basically, I wanted to be whoever need whatever, you know. Sasun Jung Chimbutan Namkaikin Tabor Yang Senji Padu Mebai Naman Yan Si Yaryang Sho Saso Jung Chimbo Namkaikin It's like a you know four elements earth, water, wind, they are permanently there for serve the beings who live on this and also space. So me me and I want you to be uh I wanted to be um, uh, I want to be the needs of countless sentient beings. So as a conclusion, the, the, the limitless space as a limitless sentient beings in, in order to these limitless sentient beings achieve enlightenment 
and I want to be their needs until reaching enlightenment. So the next one is actually actual, actual receiving the, the Bodhisattva vow. Uh, so Bodhisattva vow, when we read, uh, when we take Bodhisattva vow, as I said earlier, there are three ways of taking Bodhisattva vow. Uh, taking Bodhisattva vow like a king, uh, taking Bodhisattva vow like a shepherd, and taking Bodhisattva vow like a sheep, shepherd. Huh? Shepherd. Captain, yes. The boat. Oh. Captain. Yeah, boat driver. Huh? Captain. So there are three ways, you know, and then uh, the the king, bodhisattva, uh, uh, taking bodhisattva vow like a king means generating bodhicitta and practice and six perfections. The first I want to achieve enlightenment, then I want to lead all sentient beings to the state of omniscient. So the second one is uh, uh, me and all sentient beings. I want you to take all sentient beings along with me while I'm also practicing. I want to get to the state of enlightenment together. So then the next one is uh, uh, sh shepherd, you know. So first I wanted all sentient beings to achieve enlightenment. I wanted to work hard. I wanted to, you know, give everything uh, up to achieve for sentient beings to achieve enlightenment, and then I achieve enlightenment, like a bodhisattva avalokiteshvara. And Buddha Shakyamuni is like a king, you know. He achieved enlightenment, and then uh, lead all sentient beings to the uh, omniscient. So when we take this Bodhisattva vow, uh, there are actually uh, two different ways of uh, two different ways of taking Bodhisattvas. The so first one is um, uh, uh, Asanga uh, uh, Buddha Maitreya tradition, which means uh, aspiration Bodhicitta and actual Bodhicitta uh, taking in in a two steps, and then there is a nag. Uh, uh, Nagarjuna's way of taking Bodhisattva vow is uh, taking together. So here is, I think, Asanga way. The first one is Jedang Hunji Deshi Di Chanju Tuna Chiva Chanju Sambeh Lava Deda Remhi Nebar Saas. So now I'm going to receive the actual Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva vow, the taking, taking the Bodhisattva. The first verse is actually receiving Bodhisattva vow. Fine, that's all. After I receive Bodhisattva vow, for the benefit of all sentient beings, I want to follow all the rules, whatever rules that I have to follow in the practice uh, to, after I receive the vow, accordingly I, I will practice. Step by step, just process, you know, step by step practice. I think we have to stop here today. Yeah, it's a little clock cried because we st we started a little late. Yeah. So we will continue uh, next week. Yeah, next week. Uh, starting at two o'clock.